Welcome back on this part three video tutorial on automatic invoice in Excel. In this video, you will learn how to maintain invoice and payment tracker sheet dynamically. We will transfer the details of invoice to payment tracker sheet and automatically adjust the incoming payments of customers to the receivable invoices based on first payment first allocation method. Let me quickly show you the demo of what we are going to do here. Here I have an invoice and payment tracker sheet. In the next sheet, I have to enter the records of incoming payments from different customer. As soon as a detail of payment receipt is entered, it will automatically allocate in the payment received amount column of payment tracker sheet. Let me create here few invoices of some customers. In the invoice and payment tracker sheet, the details of invoice is automatically populated. Suppose that I have received 12,000 rupees from customer AB. Then I will have to enter this payment receipt here in this payment receipt sheet. Let's enter it here. Click and see in the invoice and payment tracker sheet. The payment of 12,000 is automatically allocated to the invoices of customer AB. The first invoice is fully settled and second invoice is partially settled. Here, you will see the final balance status of the selected customer, which is 879 receivable. Suppose I received another payment of 3,000 from customer AB. Let's enter it in receipt sheet. Check in the invoice and payment tracker sheet. Second invoice also fully settled down and the remaining payment is given as advance payment. If you receive 5,000 from customer GH, enter it in the receipt sheet. Check in the invoice and payment tracker. The payment required for first invoice of customer GH is settled and remaining payment goes in the advance. So that was the demo of what we are going to do. Let's start with the process of adding this feature in automatic invoice template. Add two new sheets. Rename first sheet as IAP tracker, which means invoice and payment tracker. In the invoice and payment tracker sheet, in A1 cell, write the title invoice and payment tracker. In row number three, put the column headers, which are invoice date, invoice number, buyer's name, invoice amount, invoice due date, and payment received amount. Select column headers and one row below it, then create table. Put the name of table as IAP tracker. In F1 cell, write balance status. In E1 cell, create a drop down list for customer selection. Rename sheet 2 as payment receipt. Put the title as payment receipt details. In the row number 3, Put the column headers. These are date, customer name, and received amount. Here too, create a table with the name of PMT receipt. Formatting of the new sheets is complete. Now we have to transfer the details of invoice to this invoice and payment tracker sheet every time we create and save a new invoice. For this, let's go to VBA and create a sub procedure. First, define the variables. DIM IAP as worksheet. DIM INV as worksheet. Dim LR as long. Set the values of these variables. 
Set IAP is equal to this workbook dot sheets IAP tracker. Set INV is equal to this workbook dot sheets invoice. LR is equal to IAP dot cells IAP dot rows dot count one dot end XL up dot row plus one. To copy and paste the invoice date to last blank cell of invoice date column, write this code. INV dot range H1 dot copy. IAP dot range A and LR dot paste special Excel paste values and number formats. Now copy and paste this code and change the cell and column reference for invoice number, buyer's name, invoice amount, and due date. To exit from copy mode, write this code. Application dot cut copy mode is equal to false. Next, we have to call this procedure every time we save the invoice. For this, go to print and save sub procedure. Then below this call data transfer, call data transfer IAP. Again, go to save invoice procedure and call data transfer IAP below the call data transfer. Let's make an invoice and check if it is working as expected. Here you see data successfully transferred to invoice and payment tracker sheet. Here, when I save the first invoice, a blank row is created. Just delete this blank row of the table. Create few more invoices. Here you see, the details of invoice is automatically given here in invoice and payment tracker sheet. Next, we have to use a formula in payment received amount column to automatically allocate the incoming payments of customer to their invoices based on first payment first allocation method. For this, click on this cell, then start writing the formula. The formula I'm going to use here is little longer, which has combination of multiple functions. So, watch it carefully. Let me increase the height of formula bar so that the whole formula will be visible. Click on F4 cell, click on the formula bar, press is equal to, type min function, open parentheses. In the number one parameter of min function, use the sum if function. In range, put the customer name column of payment receipt table. Put a comma. In criteria, Click on the first customer name in the IAP tracker table. Put a comma. In some range, put the received amount column of PMT receipt table. Close sum if function with a parentheses. Put minus symbol. Again, use another sum if function. In the range, combine offset function. In reference of offset function, click on the buyer's name header cell. Skip the row and column parameter by putting three commas. In the height parameter, combine the row function. In the reference of row function, click on the first buyer's name. Close row function with parentheses, then put minus symbol. Again, use another row function. In the reference, click on buyer's name header cell. Then close row function and offset function by two parentheses. Put a comma. In the criteria, click on the first buyer's name cell. Put a comma. In the sum range, combine the offset function again. In reference, click on payment received amount header cell. Skip rows and column parameters by putting three commas. 
And in the height parameter, use the row function. In reference of row function, click on the cell below the payment received amount header. Due to the formula, the cell is not clickable, so click on E4 cell, then press the right arrow key in keyboard to select that cell. Close row function with parentheses and put minus symbol. Again, combine another row function. In the reference, click on the header cell of payment received amount. Then close row function, offset function, and sum if function with three closing parentheses. Put a comma. In this number two parameter of min function, click on the first invoice amount cell. Then close the min function with the parentheses and hit enter. Formula has displayed zero in the allocated payments because I have not entered any detail of payment in receipt tracker sheet. Suppose that customer CD paid payment of 8,000, then enter it in the payment receipt sheet. To select the customer name, create here a drop-down list using data validation. Put 8,000 in the received amount. Now, check in the invoice and payment tracker sheet. Out of 8,000, 7,507.20 is allocated to the first invoice and the remaining payment is partially allocated to the second invoice of customer CD. To check the final balance status of customer selected here, subtract the total invoice of each customer from total payment received of each customer by using the SUMIF function. To display receivable, advance, and nil, along with the balance value, use here custom cell formatting. Here you see, 2951 is the final receivable balance from customer CD. Let's add a payment receipt of 3000 from customer GH. Out of 3000, 2719.2 is allocated to this invoice and remaining payment of 281 is in the advance. When you generate a new invoice of customer GH, this advance amount will auto-adjust in the new invoice. Here you see, advance amount of 281 is allocated to the new invoice automatically. And the new balance is 1,483 receivable. In this way, this will keep on auto-allocating the received payments from customers to their outstanding invoices automatically. In the next part of this video, we will learn validating the quantity column of invoice sheet with the available stock or inventory. Because, while generating an invoice, it is very important to check the available stock to ensure timely supply and to reduce the chance of invoice cancellation. For example, when you put the invoice quantity of 500 units here, how do you know that this stock is available in warehouse or not? For that, I will show you how to automatically connect the invoice sheet to inventory management sheet and get stock out notification in real time while generating an invoice. So. 
That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in next part of this automatic invoice in Excel with more interesting features.